Again, it's this reopening, this valve that investors are focused in on, and that's why we've been seeing volatility throughout the entire week. But to try to parse what is happening, we're going to bring in an expert here. Joining us now is Ted Oaksley. Oakley, he's a founder and managing partner at Oxbow Advisors. Ted, thank you for joining me here today. I don't want to start with the obvious, but I'm going to. The volatility that we've seen this week, we've seen concerns about reopening of businesses. We've seen obviously civil unrest on racial injustices. What do you think investors were paying attention to most this week? You know, Nora, uh, I think, you know, it started out really with the Fed buying the bonds and that, that changed the atmosphere uh, over the last four, five, six days. And I think that set them up so that they thought, you know, things will be okay. But generally, I'm, I feel as though the COVID situation, the, the reappearance is not as strong this time around as the last time with investors. Now, I may be wrong on that. I'm just noticing that they don't seem to be as uptight about it. So I don't think that's as much in the marketplace right now as just as much as the speculative nature of everything going on. I want you to explain a little bit more what you mean by the Fed announcing its purchase of corporate bonds, how that changed sentiment, because it's not the first time the Fed has announced a new measure or a relatively new measure during this pandemic. So what did change as far as how investors are viewing Fed action? You know, Nora, that's true. But this time, if you remember, we had a big down day on Thursday, that day the market was down 6%, and it came back a little bit on Friday, started back down on Monday, and the Fed basically came in and bought cor corporate bonds. Now, not, not low grade, but corporate bonds. And everybody's like, you have to be manipulating the market or you wouldn't be doing this. There's no reason to buy those. There's nothing there that would tell you to do that. And they can say what they want to, Jay Powell, but it's pure market manipulation. It has been since March. And uh, I think they'll continue to throw it out there. Every time you have weakness, they're going to continue to throw it out until they can't. And that's, but that's where you are right now. And that's what I say. When you start doing things you don't need to do, it's, then you know there's something else going on. So if the Fed, it, it, from your perspective, is seemingly announcing these measures to manipulate the market, where does this, the responsibility lie going forward when it comes to aiding small businesses, aiding consumers? Is there more onus on the federal government? Or what do you kind of expect as far as, as stimulus measures broadly? Well, Nora, I wish it was on fiscal policy. That's what I wish it was on. But we don't have the type of leadership uh, either side in Washington to really get that done. They sort of uh, delegate that to the Fed. And the Fed only has money powers, unfortunately. And money powers uh, won't get the job done. I mean, yeah, you give money to people for a little while, but you don't get in a situation where you give them incentives to build things, to add employees, to do things like that. I think that is where fiscal policy really makes a big difference. And we don't, you know, we don't have that right now. And the Fed is only, they're in the money game. And so whatever the Treasury gives them through SPV or whatever, that's how they make this work. Even though we saw volatility this week, we did end uh, on a high note this week. We saw a weekly gain, the S&P 500, Dow, and NASDAQ closing the week up. Um, I'm curious what impact do you think the closing of these Apple stores will have? Because it's been this indicator for other retail companies with these brick and mortar locations to try to track how Apple's reopening has gone. Do you think this is going to put a, a damper on investor sentiment going into next week? I really don't think so. And, and let me say this, uh, we own Apple and we own Microsoft too. Now Microsoft never, never opened their stores. Uh, Apple did, perhaps it was too early, that's not my call, but uh, I don't think it will have a big impact on them other than the fact because there's a lot of other places that are still closed. And so I don't, your question about will it dampen their uh, appetite, I don't think so. What do you think is going to give investors more optimism then? Because it feels like the indicators we've gotten this week is of, of a risk of increasing infections across the U.S., risks to businesses reopening. What are investors looking towards to give them optimism that we are on this path of recovery? From an investment standpoint, I don't think they're looking at the COVID side at all. I, I, I think what's happening here is you have this momentum going so that all of a sudden, you know, it's the only game in town and you have a lot of small players, a lot of things happening. And so when you get this momentum going and things keep on going up, you feel a little better every day. You almost get addicted to it. 
And I think that's what's driving this thing right now. It's like, you know, if I sell something, I'm probably making an error because two weeks from now, it, it probably might be higher. I think that's what's happening here. It's not, it has nothing to do to me with COVID right now. So you're saying that investors generally are riding this momentum. We've also seen a lot of movements from Robinhood, this app that is we use sometimes as a proxy for millennial traders. Um, we've seen this kind of driving overall market sentiment too. Do you think these kinds of apps, this kind of fintech is going to also drive sentiment going forward? I do for a while. Uh, I, I think until uh, you get an extended down period where, uh, you know, right now for most of those Robinhood traders, when they buy something uh, that's down, it may go down a little more one more day and then it comes back. Uh, but I've been around longer than most people. So I've been able to see a lot of different instances where hot money was really doing something. And uh, I noticed it back in the in the 80s with oil in the early 80s where everybody was trading oil. And then uh, in 99 and 2000. I knew it wouldn't end well because too many people quit their jobs to day trade. And now you have this situation where they don't pay anything. And so they're just sitting home and I, I don't know how much you know about betting, uh, but in betting, you have to pay what we call the VIG or the juice. It's about 10% of the bet. Well, you don't do that now with stocks. You just go in and buy them. There's no commission and you trade out. And so that's created its own type of casino. And you're getting a lot of young people somewhat addicted to it. Uh, I know about the app. I've seen the app. I know what goes on with it. And it's easy to operate. And so I think that's where you are right now with that. I think, that, I think that's something will come, uh, unfortunately, to a bad ending eventually, but I, just not right now. Ted, thank you so much for your time and for your insight today. That's Ted Oakley. He's a founder and managing partner at Oxbow Advisors. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.